Hello, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. So the year was 2018, the month was June, so it was just slightly over two years ago. When Karthik Numani is standing on the stage, ESPN is televising it. It's the finals of the National Spelling Bee Championship in the United States of America. And Karthik knows that his opponent, the last one standing, has just misspelled her word. So all he's got to do is get his word right, and he takes home the trophy. The announcer calls out the word. Koinonia. That's right. The word I've been talking about all week. That Greek word, koinonia, and Karthik hears the word, and he begins. K O I N O N I A. Boom! And he won the title. Now, that word has been one that has been used for thousands of years in Greek life. And it was a word that was very common in the New Testament time period. It was a favorite of the Apostle Paul. And I've been using aspen trees as an example this week because they have a certain koinonia. Aspen trees are, are in a grove are all related to each other by a common root system. And so if one tree gets sick, other trees get sick. If one tree is, is, is healthy and vibrant, it passes on health and vibrance to the other trees. And the passage of koinonia that I want to use today, relating it to that idea of a common root system, a common, uh, a, a, a common sustenance of life, comes from a letter Paul wrote to a church in Philippi. And in the third chapter, the, I think it's the 16th verse. It may be the sixth verse, but Paul says that he wants to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, sharing koinonia in his suffering and conform to his death because Paul knew that joy would follow the suffering. And all week I've talked about koinonia within the framework of good things and encouragement and everything like that. But in the midst of all of the passages in the New Testament that talk about the marvelous things of koinonia, of sharing, of having this common root system, here comes this glaring passage where Paul says he wants to share in the suffering of Christ. How do we deal with that? Paul recognized something that's very fundamental and it's hard for most people to get a grip on. But there is a truth that is fundamental and that is this world is not utopia. We do not live in the Garden of Eden. We are not in, in, in the, 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 the world of heaven and earth that come later. We live in a fallen world where there is suffering, there is sadness, and there is death. But if you listen to what Paul says, Paul says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, sharing in his sufferings and conform to his death. That almost sounds out of order. I mean, the suffering came first and then the death and then the resurrection. But Paul changes the order. Paul says, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. That's because when you understand that first, you understand that all of the suffering in this world, all of the frailties of this world, all of the misery of this world will be conquered through the resurrected Jesus because we have a life in him that is beyond the grave. And the power of that resurrection to change who we are and how we address life allows us to see even the suffering in life just something that happens because we are sharing a common root system with the Lord Jesus who himself suffered. And so we share in that common root system. We know that this world is not what we're made for. 
And we can rail at God and say, why are things this way? But the answer is simple. Because we live in a fallen world where sin runs rampant. But there is an assurance by the power of the resurrection of Jesus that while we share in his sufferings today, we'll be conformed to his likeness in death, but we will share in the power of that resurrection. So whatever you're going through today, realize that your roots are connected with the Lord Jesus, not just in suffering and in death, but in the power of his resurrection. And there is a joy that comes from that, even in the midst of suffering. That's your video thought for the day. See you tomorrow.